spoken about Chris Lee a few times on here. Obviously, you know, kind of follow a lot of the LA comedic scene, stand up scene, whatever, all of those individuals. And obviously, he's had a very interesting, you know, 18 months or so, right? He's been accused of some fairly egregious things, you know, being a little bit of a kitty fiddler, which for all intents and purposes doesn't seem to be the case but the optics didn't look too great when you're being you know accused by girls that happen to be that are underage of engaging to some very nefarious things especially when you have a you know a wife or a fiance or a girl at home that's pregnant and stuff it just didn't look that great but regardless it seems like he's made some kind of a comeback um he's obviously restarted his podcast um he seems to be doing that quite regularly he has a pop pretty popping patron at the moment people on his discourse seem to be enjoying the stuff that he puts out and generally the fans seem to have welcomed him back with open arms um despite him being accused of again something pretty heinous that you would imagine would be a pretty much uh an excommunicator in most places or in most kind of industries if something that you, you get accused of um you know being involved in anything sexual with girls that happen to that are underage or so what keeps saying happen to be they are underage then usually it's a kind of you know that's you done career-wise but with stand-up and with the fact that most stand-ups are kind of you know not the most um clean or PC of people I think it's given him an opportunity to kind of re-enter back into the fold and I've been wondering for a long time ever since he started the podcast again like why doesn't he just go up on stage like he's clearly you know as much as people don't like what he might do on stage, he, there was clearly a point in time where he was really good. I think a lot of people would mention that, you know, maybe it's not their taste, it's not something they would, they would pay money to go and see, but in terms of what he does, no one else can do it the way he does, and the fan base that he had at the time, you know, one of the only kind of stand-up comics where people used to mention that a lot of girls used to turn out to his shows and stuff, especially young ones, which, you know, led to probably the trouble that he got involved in, but we move. So you're just wondering, you know, why don't you just get back on stage and do what comes natural to you what kind of gives you joy what gives you purpose as opposed to kind of trying to substitute it with podcasting which although it could be lucrative i understand and it can be one way of sort of you know um doing material that i would imagine is nothing that would replace or kind of um substitute going up on stage right and um so far we haven't heard anything especially with the comedy store reopening there's a whole set of new management there um some of the ogs that were there before have obviously moved off the back of joe rogan designed to go to texas it just seemed odd this would be the perfect time to kind of go and get back on stage and do your thing especially with the things going on in the world you'd imagine people were kind of forgotten about him anyway so he could basically go up on stage with no real problems you would think then i happened to stumble across this um screenshot which is courtesy of an Instagram account, which I'm assuming is like a celebrity gossip Instagram account called Dieu Deux Moi, right? Is that is that meant to be French and something in Spanish? Or is that meant to be is that a French word? Deux Moi, right? Two, two of me, I'm assuming that's what it means. But regardless, someone sent in an anonymous form of submission about him. And this is a really weird um kind of a spot that somebody made of supposedly Chris Lee being at the comedy store. So it says the following. It's a message, a screenshot, obviously, from their Instagram stories. And somebody sent in this anonymous uh, submission that says Chris Lee at the comedy store. And the message reads as following. Last Saturday, I went to the comedy store's main room show. Around halfway through the show, I noticed Crystal Lee standing in the hallway looking at the performers super anxiously. Anytime somebody would get near him, he would avoid eye contact and he only spoke to one other male comic. He was standing there for like 20 minutes. When he left the show at a very uh, a little early, we looked at the car pulling up next to us to leave and he was in the passenger seat literally with his hands up to avoid his face. So covering his face so people wouldn't see him. Seems so sketchy. Like you're a well-known comedian, people are going to recognize you at the most famous comedy club. Exactly. I heard he might start getting into stand-up again though just a weird situation so from what from what i've known because i think i've only yeah i went to comedy store once and i went to laugh factory a couple of times i went to la in 2015 or 16 it was right and there is a bit i think it's featured in the documentary where next to the kind of i think it's the hallway where all the pictures and the things are or the signatures you can kind of look out onto the stage and i think that's where a lot of sometimes comics stand and stuff and watch their peers and you know can talk whatever and i think that's the place where some comics get annoyed where fans go to if they you know they try to come in and you know um butt in on conversation or whatnot so there is a little kind of arch where you can kind of see where people are performing and what they're doing so it's not you know it's not it's not um out of reason for you see somebody standing there like a famous comic but i guess the avoiding eye contact and stuff makes sense because i would imagine there's a large contingency of people at the store who are probably annoyed that he's back 
because he's you know one of the top comics in LA in general he kind of seems to attract a crowd people tend to go to his shows and he, everyone seems to think he's funny for the most part and there's obviously going to be a contingency of, a contingent of people or contingency a group of people let's remove one who definitely don't want to see him there who think he shouldn't be given another opportunity to go up on stage again so it definitely is going to be a weird place to be especially in LA because everyone's got like um What's the, what do you call it? You called it like situational morals, right? Um, or right, situational morals, or kind of temporary morals and ethics based upon the person it is, what they can do for their career. So a lot of people would generally just want to give him the stink eye, give him the cold shoulder, generally because they feel like it's the right thing to do. And then the moment he gets accepted back in, suddenly those people will come slivering back and try and be his friend again. I'm sure that's going to happen. And in general too, there must be a little bit of. As much as people like to pretend like cancer culture doesn't exist, it doesn't really if you don't want it to exist and you've got the funds to basically weather the storm. But it is still embarrassing to have your inf you have your kind of private life, your sex life kind of be blasted out there to the public, um, especially something, especially when you're someone like Adelia who generally try to portray a completely different image. And then the story comes out and it shatters everyone's illusion of what you're actually like. Right. And it's kind of not congruent to the to the image that you were basically carefully trying to concoct and present to the public it can definitely be somewhat um it can be somewhat of an intrusive experience to go to to go through you probably don't want people staring at you too tough you want to kind of avoid the the, the glances of strangers because you feel like they're judging you and have something to say when really they're not they're just looking at you because you're a tall lanky white guy wearing weird trainers i don't know jamie you know I mean? i'm sure there's a lot of weird mind games that come into um play there but one of the things that really is strange in this regard is that you would imagine if somebody doesn't feel they, they did anything wrong and from everything that we've heard of Chris Aaliyah, he generally thinks he kind of conducted himself in the best way possible he didn't do anything untoward everything was done consensually and whatnot why would you feel nervous or anxious or guilty about going up I don't really understand it right because you'd imagine the only reason why he was there was because he spoke to the management he spoke to whoever's booking it and they've kind of worked out a kind of roadmap or a way for him to get back on stage and that might include him kind of popping in hanging around seeing people do you know what I mean and then slowly but surely get to a point where he can perform I'm assuming so because I'd assume if they didn't want him to be there he would have been very clear and he wouldn't have set foot on that kind of um, property ever again but to be there in the first place definitely makes me think that there's a route back for him that they've kind of outlined which is interesting too because I've heard supposedly the booker or who's involved in dealing with it is a woman or a couple of women or maybe it's a team not too sure but whoever it is have taken over from Adam Ega who's obviously moved over to Texas so I don't know weird place to be like like I said before when it comes to counterculture and stuff I'm not really a fan of institutions and stuff and communities gatekeeping who can have a career and who can't because I feel like everyone's morality is sort of dependent on the person they're dealing with right one person gets dealt with this way when they do a certain thing and the other person can get dealt with a completely different way based on who likes them who doesn't like them so I'm not really a fan of institutions coming together and saying hey you can't perform here anymore and then collectively everyone agreeing I don't really like that I think fans should be the ones who decide whether you have a career or you don't so if the fans think you know you're, you've done something we can't forgive by you know allegedly dealing with underage girls um then and they decide not to come to shows anymore or they boycott and stuff then fair enough that's cool but comedy store saying you're not going to perform here ever again you're done in comedy and then other clubs responding i'm not down for it so give him an opportunity let him perform on stage if people want to come and see him tell his jokes and do his weird girly mannerism and have that weird inflection voice the voice thing is strange i think it's i guess it's, it's normal you shouldn't it shouldn't be surprising because it is entertainment it is show business and all that well it is showbiz and whatnot but i never understood why some comics have like a different speaking voice on the podcast than they do when they go on stage tom segura sort of does it he has a really slow cadence on stage as opposed to how he speaks on the podcast which is again somewhat understandable because the, his delivery is what kind of makes it really funny what he's talking about um but then someone like chris lee has a very infantile weird way of speaking on the stage like he's got that weird like you know, that's so somewhat it's quite like an all worded way of speaking. It just sounds weird compared to actually how he speaks day to day. Um, so I, I never really understood why that's a thing that happens. I guess, you know, everyone's got their way of approaching their material and how they do the show, whatnot. I don't really know anything. I'm just a casual viewer from the outdoors, but um, or from the outside, sorry. But I'm interested to know, like, if you saw Chris Lee's show or if you're a fan of him, would you go? Would you buy a ticket? Would you attend? Um, do you, would you kind of, 
protest outside of a comedy store and you know let them know that you're not happy that he's performing on stage like what would you do like do you care that much i don't know i, I wonder what the case is here i wonder if it's as big as a deal as lucy k thing because i remember the lucy k thing when he kept going back and performing at random clubs everywhere people would be protesting they'd be sending emails calling and whatnot threatening to boycott and it kind of you know was a silent protest that followed him everywhere he went to the point where he just stopped announcing or the club stopped announcing that he was popping in he was just like popping as a surprise and if you're there you were there if not if not um but i don't know if chris alia thing was as big it was as high profile as the louis ck thing because louis ck again was maybe more beloved in the terms of a general consumer base and whatnot you know hbo you know saturday night live blah blah blah, blah. i don't know many, many specials who knows whether or not people have just moved on Chris Lee and don't really give a shit I don't really know but I think if he generally thinks he's not guilty and did nothing wrong I don't see why he's cowering in a corner in the hallway somewhere covering his face and avoiding eye contact and shaking if anything he should be walking up in there with his head held high saying you know I didn't do what I, you think I did and you can all suck my dick and shit right that's what he should be doing but you know maybe the embarrassment in general of having everyone find out that you're into you know girls that look a particular way girls that might look a particular age is probably more embarrassing than the thing that you did i would imagine so so maybe that's where he's at and he needs to kind of warm himself up but let's see in it let's see what he ends up doing in general but yeah that was the random form submission but yeah let me know what you think in the comments man do you think would you go to a crystal show now do you care about his comedy do you ever, did you ever think he was funny i'd love to know what you think in the comments down below